All right, pressing live. You are good to go. What's up, people? We are live here on the Spread Love Podcast. Yeah. We're here. We're here. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I guess we have to somebody. applaud for ourselves. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's how it works now. I'm yeah. applauding for me. I'm applauding for this new guy that's sitting there. Oh. Who's this guy in the middle? There's the a guy the, here. The man. Our the special man. guest, Mr. Dave Cos. We'll Woo! give him a woohoo. Cos. Very Thank happy God. to have him with us. Let me us. just say at the outset, gents, what a true honor this is, because, uh, you know, Take Six has a lot of fans all over the world. But I think, and everybody who is a Take Six fan thinks that they're the number one Take Six fan. <laughs> That's true. But that they're behind, true. they are behind me. Oh, Dave. my. Okay. Well, Since today, oh Dave Kaz is the number one Take Six fan. <laughs> All right, now. Oh, and he's actually no. a member of Take Six today because we don't have David Thomas with us today, so you have to stand in. A day for a day, if it makes sense. Day Except for a day. For, I, I don't know if you know this, I cannot sing at all. So but you play gonna, that saxophone like you are singing, brother. That's well, right. Do. Maybe maybe David's parts can be transposed to saxophone and I could just be the one sax voice within the <laughs> There we go. Work. I love it. Absolutely. There we go. No problem. So, so Dave, I want to get started and... and um, ask you how long have we known you because i was i was racking my brain and i was like man it's been quite some time and we've we've done a ton of things where we've been either on the same program together or kind of going this way you know back and forth as of hey dave hey take six you know so do you know how long it's been since we've known each other well i mean when I started in 1990 as a solo artist that when my first album came out in 1990 and I was kind of kicking around for about four years before that working with other artists. So uh, let's see when, when was the first take six project? 88. 88. Oh, so you guys, you beat me by two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had already known about you guys when I was starting out. So um, I would say it was probably, we probably met early, early nineties. Yeah, I'm going to say that. We're as looking well. at 30 years. No matter yeah. no, how you slice it, we're looking at 30 years. And I've got yeah. the gray hair to prove it. I was going to say, none too. of us had gray then. We all, we, we had too. hair. You still have amazing hair. I'm really yeah. mad at you right now. <laughs> Me too. Well, how do you know this is not a wig? It's a great wig. <laughs> it is. You got us fooled, man. <laughs> man. So, what have you been doing? What have you been doing in this past year? We ask all of our guests this, all of our musician friends. We've been off the road. I'm assuming you've been off the road. What have you been doing, man? Well, it was interesting, actually, when the pandemic hit. I was in New York City when it hit um, in in mid-March. I was working on writing songs for a new album that I wanted to uh, release in 2020 because 2020 was sort of my 30th anniversary of the first album that I made. Mm -hmm. Um, And when the pandemic hit, I came back to Los Angeles and basically shelved all those plans. And uh, for the, the real lockdown or the quarantine, I basically uh, just, I was thinking to myself on one hand, and I don't know if you guys can relate to this. On one hand, I was thinking, this is really amazing to have nothing to do because for all these years, decades, I mean, I never really took time off, maybe a couple of days or a week, or I would add on uh, a few days to a, some show in Australia or whatever to have a little break but there was no real appreciable break. And so I was thinking to myself, maybe I will take this time to just chill and and plug back in. And then very soon after I realized what was important to me, I started to to reach for the music, the feel good music that that I knew would make me feel better in a time when nothing seemed to make me feel better. So I was listening to the Bill Withers and the Earth, Wind and Fires and the Towers of Tower Powers and the, you know, all of that stuff that just, I put on it and all of a sudden I felt great. And it, it dawned on me that maybe instead of taking a break during this time, maybe I should uh, show up for people that would look to my music for the, in the mm. same way that I look to these other artists. Right. And I started to just reach out and in a sense, kind of be of service to, to, to the fans. And uh, it was a beautiful thing. And then I, I uh, amazingly enough, I, I had the idea that, well, maybe we can make this record. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I started writing virtually with my usual co-writers like Jeff Lorber and Darren Ron out of uh, uh, Colorado. And, and 
we wrote songs and then we actually recorded songs and everybody was home. That was the most amazing thing. So right. there was a, a song that, that the David Sanborn and I wrote that would have never happened. The David is my like number one idol. Saxophone Which is artist. cool that you guys get along. Oh my God. I loved it. And yeah, so we was, hate all other singers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was available. He said, let's do it. And the same thing with Bob James. And, um, you know, we had a really wonderful collection of, uh, of, of great musicians that were guest artists and everybody, it was such an amazing thing because when you uh, got their stuff, uh, the, the way the technology is, you can, it's all virtual anyway. So you, right. you push up the faders when you get in the studio and you hear somebody's, uh, even if it was like uh, Paul Jackson Jr. on a, a, a rhythm guitar part, it exploded with energy because right. everybody was so excited to make music. During right, this right. So we yeah. were able to make, uh, to put together an album that came out in October of last year called A New Day. And it really was a, a quarantine album from start to finish. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm proud of that aspect. And the other, just to answer your question too, the other, um, on the occasional days when I would not have anything to do, I, I, I sat on my couch and we were joking about it before we went on the air today. I watched Netflix like, the, like everybody else in the, in the world <laughs> and enjoyed really not having anything to do or anywhere to go because, you know, the, the, my home has been an airplane seat or a, a, a lumpy hotel bed for the last 20 plus, 25 plus years. Mm. Here, here. So <laughs> with that being said, do you mind us playing uh, this live video of A New Day? Just you know, since you brought it up, you know, we... Of course not. Yeah. In fact, here's the, the really cool thing is I think this is what our 29th, 28th uh, episode of this. And we haven't played any videos, I don't think, yet. You know, as far as, you know, our live uh, guests on. So we want to play this because it's a really amazing video. And I think Jason has it queued up. And let's let's keep our fingers crossed if we can get this happening. All right. A song called A New Day.
saying, dude. Ooh, man. That's and awesome. I believe a new dude. Dude, that's awesome. That's uh, literally, man. literally almost shed a tear. That you guys was... are so sweet. Thank you for playing Thank that. Absolutely. Hey, Joey, man. who you got? Who you got there? Who's who's uh who's visiting you there? Didn't hit stop video quick enough. <laughs> She's <laughs> upstaging us, man. She is going to get in on a video. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, she's she's a much more interesting guest than I am. <laughs> hey, oh, no. So I want to ask you, man, about your workload. As somebody, you know, the, especially the 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 Southern California boys out here, the the workload that you keep, I would I want to dare say the, the that you are from the outside looking in a workaholic. <laughs> you do everything. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how it is you balance so many different things. Do you say no to stuff or you, do you take it or do you have this inner drive or does, is this a generational thing? Your mother did it and your father did it. And you, how did, how do you, how's all that come together? That's a good, uh, good question. Alvin. I, you know, I, I, I guess maybe it, it boils down to just getting bored easily and I don't love doing the same thing over and over. Um, right. And I enjoy the idea of um, I love collaborating. And I love yeah. trying new things and being pushed. Yeah. Uh, just actually finished an album that's going to come out in June with this uh, this kid named Corey Wong, who's a Minneapolis guitar player, incredible wow. guitar player, and he's a member of a band called Wolfpack too. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I've been like watching all these youngsters, if you will. Yeah. Because um, yeah. they're all much younger than me, and just my my uh, my mouth goes just wide open at just what they're able to accomplish in the this new world of mm -hmm. uh social media and the just the the digital age of of music and being able to capitalize on a lot of these ideas that are that are not i'm not native i'm not a digital native mm -hmm. joey you're you're the, the, the was that your daughter she, she's a digital native she's gonna She's going to blow us away in her life with her knowledge and, and uh, abilities with all the technology. So what I've been doing really is just being a student mm -hmm. and trying to, in my, uh, at my age now, just infiltrating. Mm -hmm. So I'm like infiltrating this group and infiltrating these guys and seeing how they mm -hmm. do it. And but I'm you're doing stuff besides music too, though. Yeah, you got cars, wines, you got yeah. radio show, all kinds of stuff, man. How, how did this stuff come to, come to happen? Where's the cars, wine? <laughs> Where's the wine, man? Where's the I'm wine? Out, man. I'll send you all bottles. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. The, the wine actually was funny. It, all these things, it's not like some master plan. It's just the like my little brother, who's actually not my little brother, but I adopted him as my little brother. He came up with the idea of like, you should have your own wine because you know, you play all these wineries and music kind of goes with the wine. I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Why, what do I know about wine other than I like to drink it? And so the idea came a little later saying that, that well, if we, if we did this, we found somebody to make it, we could um, sell it and all the proceeds would go to, to charity. I work with an organization called the Starlight Children's Foundation, which helps kids that mm -hmm. are in the hospital for long periods of time. So all of a sudden it was like, okay, yeah, let's do the wine mm -hmm. and have it really funnel the, the, the attention and the, the funds to Starlight. And now over, the, I mean, we've probably done it for about 10 years. We've raised thousands and thousands of dollars. Great, for, man. For oh, so great. Awesome. Kind of like doing projects that are not mm -hmm. just to do something, but to hopefully uh, create a, a desired effect and help. A people. better world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that I'm speaking to the choir. And one of the reasons why I love you guys so much and appreciate your contributions, there's the musical contribution. There and that is untouchable. Nobody, you guys were the first. You guys were the the ones that said, "This is what we do," mm -hmm. and it had not really. I mean, it had been done before, but not in the way that you did it. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else came after you guys. Thank you, brother. Uh, but what you've done, not on the concert stage and not in the studios, the part that really I respond to, and there's been a a level of elegance mm -hmm. that you have put into the world that is admirable, very admirable, not just to me, but pretty much to the entire artistic community. And of course, your fans. Who are thank you, brother. Thank well, you thank so you much, very man. Much. From the heart. Thank you for what you guys are doing. <clears throat> so awesome. Alvin mentioned earlier, and you, you kind of touched on it, that you uh, 
had written a song with Dave Sanborn and you guys were able to do it, which led me to this question, kind of a two-parter. Who is your favorite saxophone player of all time? And besides yourself. Yeah, besides yourself, of course. And has it been easy for you to lift other saxophone players up and be happy for their success and it all that kind of stuff? Because it can be kind of a tough thing when, man, this guy's not as good as me or whatever. And, you, and, you know, only to only feel comfortable saying all of that. Well, I, I think that everybody has, and I've, I've changed the way I look at, at life a lot as I've gotten older, but I think that every musician, no matter how they say it or what they say, if it, if it comes from an authentic place, then it should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my blanket statement about music um, and musicians, because I don't feel it's such a subjective thing. Like what I like to listen to and what you guys like to listen to, it may be completely different. Right. Um, but if somebody comes to their musical expression with authenticity and this is who I am, that's one of the things that I, uh, our, our format of, of radio or you know, what, smooth jazz has gotten so maligned by critics. They think mm -hmm. they sold out or something like that. Right. And the music that I make is a hundred percent from my soul. I mean, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I wouldn't have well, that's, to do it. That's a rap that jazzers that we have to deal with. When you start getting successful, they figure you sold out some part of the way. So, you know. Yeah. And I think if anybody really understood the, process of, of creating music mm -hmm. uh, from an authentic place um, that that's really all that matters. Uh, if, yeah. if people like it, great. If people don't like it, as long as it's coming from an authentic place. And to right. uh, answer your question, Clive, I mean, David Sanborn was my number one saxophone God growing mm -hmm. up. I mean, I put on those albums and I practice along. I mean, my poor parents, they must have thought, oh my God, give us a break with this kid. My Who mom is a sad boy? My mom actually forced me for a period of time to put a sock, like socks in the bell of my horn to meet. Oh, wow. Wow. And then they finally, God bless my dad, he, uh, they turned our garage into a soundproof music room so that they could. Oh, wow. Finally That's very cool. Quiet. That's very cool. But Sanborn was always the number one guy for me. And I remember in high school, I got a chance to uh, go through a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend backstage and meet him. And I was like so tongue tied and I didn't know what to say. And uh, I just like blurted out. Finally, I said, you know, Mr. Sanborn, I, I love you. I just want to be exactly like you. And I, I learned all your licks and I love your sound. And he was like looking at me and he just finally said, stop. <laughs> why don't you just find out who you are and do mm -hmm. that and and i'll continue to do my thing and you can do your thing and it was like the best advice that's I've great ever heard. That's and great. then mm -hmm. cut to many many years later where we became friends and colleagues and worked together and we did a tour together in 2016 i finally got up the nerve to ask him to do a a, a tour which is called side by side uh david sanborn dave Cosby. Wow. And every picture, and I, I encourage you guys in your off time, like you do this, but just do a little deep dive on uh, on Google and look up pictures of Dave Koz and David Sanborn live. Mm -hmm. and every one of the pictures is the same picture. It's, it shows us side by side on mm -hmm. a stage somewhere. And David is wearing all black, looking so cool. His head mm -hmm. cocked like this, you know, mm -hmm. in place. And then... <laughs> um, and then there's the picture of me on the side going, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's David Sam Morgan. It's on the stage with me. <laughs> well, let's stay here for a minute. Do you have a favorite Sanborn album? And before you answer, I'm a huge, huge David Sanborn fan as well. And my favorite album of his is Hideaway from way back in the day. Man. Oh, I loved Hideaway. Man. I loved Hideaway. I mean, I, I don't have a, a, a favorite. I mean, mm -hmm. if I had to t say the one that came to my mind right now would be his, his sort of debut album, which is called Taking Off. Mm -hmm. And it had this song called Butterfat on it, which I think it kicked off the album, if I'm not mistaken. It was the first song. It was a funky song. And he just was with his alto honking on it. And um, mm -hmm. I, tried, I tried to get him on that tour to play that song with me, mm -hmm. and he would not do it. He's very set <laughs> in his race. 
He will not do things. That's one thing I can tell you. He will not do things if you ask him nicely. Even if you ask him nicely. He just says, like, uh, no. <laughs> he knows who he is. No, That's, yeah, it's electric. Not gonna do it. Wow. Well, Clark's wow. the same way. We were, we often try to get him to do songs that he did back in the day. He says that to us in the dressing room. It, no. Yeah, absolutely. And he's often okay. honking in his own part no. of the room. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some similarities between Claude and David Sam. There we go. <laughs> Can I ask you about wish list? Any artist on the planet, any project, money, no object, style, no object, who would you do a project with? Um, if you think that there's a possibility that this could happen, I would say for right now, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Don't say it. Don't you dare. Don't say it. I'm going to say it. Don't say this, it. Is, this is live, and this is this going is out to the, to the world right now. That's so right. If I say it. Don't play with my emotions, Dave Cos. Don't play with my emotions, Dave Cos. My emotions Double. have to be protected. Would it kill you guys? Would it honestly kill you guys to do a, a little project with me? Would it kill you? It wouldn't kill us we at all. We would love that. Let's man. do it. You said it. Let's Jump do it. You got you got Mark. We got Mark Kibble here. He's the arranger. Let's make it happen. Now, Let's I'm make it happen, serious. bro. I'm now very very serious. I would love, man, you know love to do that so 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 much and um, to get a sure. chance to have you guys and i've been talking with christian a long time about getting you guys on our cruise too mm -hmm. so that's yes. got to happen so yes. these two things you know like parallel tracks we we do some some sort of recording project and we uh back it up with a nice cruise experience come on no, we, we yeah do we got to cruise come on we are so there all right but you know what that's the one thing i know for me personally I have envied the tours that you do on the cruise and the artists that you get on there. It it's just, you know, to die for. We we've been we've been uh, doing some cruises, but never with Dave Cos, man. And, and he like, goes and he goes to all these exotic locations. I'm like, Secret Islands. Secret yeah. Islands. <laughs> so he's not joking. Yeah. I've been talking to him for years about it. We have Christian uh, has been he's been doing the legwork and we, we're, we're going to make this happen. I mean, okay. we, I'm committing to you right now. We're going to make this happen. You got six the, thumbs the, ups. The nice thing, true, is that um, the cruise experience is, is like no other. And it really is. There's so many amazing cruise experiences that um, are thematic, musical or other themes that, that you mm -hmm. can use. And it's such an amazing experience to because once you get on that ship, you're amongst friends even if you know nobody because right. you're bound mm -hmm. by the by the shared love of music and people just it's so funny to watch these adults of a certain age act like high school kids mm -hmm. so getting up at the you, you didn't know about FOMO there's like extreme FOMO on this mm -hmm. nobody wants to miss anything so they're waking right. up at like 6 a.m and then going to bed at 4 a.m right <laughs> it's true because it's, it, it's the best stuff and the best camaraderie that, that happens on those cruises. So, you know, we're looking How did you start that in the first place, Dave? How did the, the cruise come about? Well, it was, it was a saxophone player by the name of Warren Hill, who did mm. a, a variety of those cruises early on. Warren mm -hmm. was a good friend of mine. Uh, and the person that he was working for uh, was a producer named Michael Lazaroff. And mm. Michael had uh, reached out to me to say, would you come and we'd like to think about doing a Dave Cross cruise. And I had this bad taste in my mouth from a cruise that my, my mom and dad took my brother and sister and I on in Mexico. It was like a three day cruise. Um, and it, it was not fun at all. <laughs> the ship was not happening. And so I just kind of said, no, 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 no. I'm not really interested in that. And then finally he just said, well, why don't you just come for a couple of days and, and, and check it out. And I did. And I played with Warren and we did a couple songs together and, I saw with my own eyes that this was not like the cruise that I thought it was going to be like, hmm. and uh, all these wonderful people and fans. And, and so we started to explore that. And then the, uh, I did five years with Michael um, and uh, that's how the, the whole thing started. And then five years after that, my contract uh, ran out and we started uh, producing it ourselves. And now we've done, sadly, we had to cancel, our last year's cruise and mm -hmm. this year's cruise. Uh, but the next one that we're doing is, is um, 
in May of 2022. And I saw that. Oh, yeah. Like, I was on your website like, hey, we're not on this cruise. Wait a minute. Again? <laughs> again? Maybe the next year. 2023? <laughs> Let's do it. It's time to make the album, you guys. We, exactly. We can record it on the cruise live. Just put it on the boots, man. Just put it on the boots. There we go. There we go. So, but that that really is um, of of all the things in my year that is uh, truly valuable uh, to me from the from an experience point of view. It's it's that because you're taking people. It's not just on uh, from the a live show it starts at eight o'clock and, and ends at maybe ten fifteen or whatever. Those couple of hours you you have that experience with people. This is. Days and days, seven full days to. Aren't you, aren't you petrified that they're going to know all your licks though by the end of the week? I would be scared that somebody would sit there. Oh, you played that yesterday. Yeah, you yeah. played that yesterday. Well, they're already sick of my licks. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have a lot of other guests to mix it up. And by the way, to your uh, earlier question, Clyde, um, like I love younger artists. I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, celebrating and, and featuring younger artists. We're doing a tour this, uh, this year in, in the summertime, uh, another Summer Horns tour that features this kid named Vincent Ingala. I don't know if you're aware of him, but hmm. he's been around for, I'd say about five years. I met him in uh, Connecticut. He was opening up for our show in Connecticut where he's from. And I was kind of a little I was kind of a little perturbed at the promoter for putting another saxophone player on before our shows. Like, could you come up? How about a guitar player? Right. Anybody. Yeah. So I sat on the side of the stage while this kid was playing 16 years old at the time. He had this audience eating out of the palm of his hand. It was unbelievable. And the more time that went by, the angrier I got. (laughs) (laughs) I was wondering if you kind of felt those those emotions when somebody... he comes off stage and I like say, hi, Vincent. Nice, nice to meet you. I'm really, really angry with you, but that was amazing. Please give me your number. I need to know you. And we became great friends. And he came on a cruise with his parents because he was underage um, the next year. And uh, he has turned into a powerhouse uh, saxophone player. He's had tons of number one records and, and uh, just it's so great and gratifying to see younger people really blossom. And he's one of those guys that, uh, and, and I could say the same about the guitar player, Adam Holly, who's really, I don't know if you guys know Adam, but he's really done an amazing job over the last few years. Um, Eric Darius is a kid that I uh, oh, yeah. watched grow up. I used to mm-hmm. see him and his dad. He was like, you know, three feet tall when I met him the first time with his dad backstage at Ruth Eckert Hall. And then the next thing you know, this kid is like killing it. But so that shows that, that you are secure as an artist to be able to embrace. You know, like a lot of artists don't do that. There are some people, especially we notice that in, in gospel music a lot. There are people who are gateways that Andre Crouch was amazing. He, so many people came through here, the wine is, and, you know, I guess later on commission. And there are other people who it's all about them <laughs> and their word, you know, they're not getting through. So that's awesome that you're doing that. Right. Well, I love it too and it, it's it's one of those things that i feel like it, it keeps me young and keeps me current and also i learn from these people i mean ostensibly it would be you'd think it would be the other way mm-hmm. uh but i guarantee you through most of my experiences with younger artists i walk away feeling i mean i'm sure you guys have done uh things where you're talking to students and and those kinds of things with with young singers sure. all over the world. i'm sure you've done a yeah. ton of them and those things, I've done a few of them. I always end up leaving like I learned something. I hope mm-hmm. that those people learn something from me. But mm-hmm. you know, I learned. I walk away from those experiences uh, feeling really like chuffed. I feel much much better after I leave those from learning from these young kids because they have a lot to say. Everybody mm-hmm. has a lot to say. That's and so it's so cool because. Um, Back in, I think it was like 94, 93, 94, he did the Lucky Day um, uh, record. And my dad would play that thing over and over and over. Fast forward to, um, I think it was 2019, when you did a Summer Horns um, tour with Gerald and, and uh, Aubrey, uh, Aubrey and, and um, I got to take my son. We always do a father-son 
uh, vacation every year. And we went to Miami this particular year. And Gerald was like, hey, I'm, he posted something that he was in Fort Lauderdale. And I was like, yo, we got to come to the show. And I'm sitting there with my son, who was like nine at the time. And we're listening to your music. And I had this moment where I was like, my dad and I used to love listening to the music. Now we're live listening to Dave Cos with my son. And, and, and dude, it was so, it was such a great moment. He had an incredible time. But for me, it was like this moment, like, yep, I'm doing a good job. That's right. <laughs> and it came full circle for you. Full circle moment. Yeah, that's how, awesome. old is, how old is your son now? He's 11 now. That's so yeah. Great. Is he yeah, uh, singing? Is he, is he a musician? He is singing. He, in fact, I missed the call last week because he was doing a play at his school. They did the high school musical play. And of course, we weren't supposed to film. I'm not supposed to even say this, but I was like, hell yeah man dude it was just mm-hmm. it was just amazing and he was saying afterwards he's like daddy i miss rehearsals i miss the crew that the crew was so i'm like this dude talking about the crew my man so yeah <laughs> it's just one of those things man and it's 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 a legacy music period you know and your music will definitely continue to do that and and bridge gaps and and cause fathers and sons and daughters and all these people to be joined together man and i think that that's such a cool thing about what you do and I wanted to say this also I met you with the fellas we were at the first time I met you was at in um in Jakarta Indonesia um it was like at the 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 Java Jazz Festival or something like that dude you were the nicest person ever it was like you've known me all your life and I was like man the same way that his music makes me feel is exactly who this person is and I think that that's the coolest thing, your authenticity, um, that when people feel incredible emotions of, of love and of, of harmony and all this other kind of stuff, they are basically um, taking part in who you are as a person. So there is no different, there's no gap between how your music makes us feel and the person that we have come to know and love. That is Dave Cosman. I appreciate you for that. Oh, buddy, you're going to make me cry. Oh, oh, you from the heart, buddy. That is so, so sweet. And I, I, I remember that time in, in Jakarta meeting you. And um, that was, you know, there's so many musicians together mm-hmm. in a strange land. And it was hot. It was a strange foreign land. And it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, that our community uh, showing up for each other is, is, it's very special. It's what, it's kind of what I, what has kept me uh, motivated um, mm-hmm. for all these years is the relationship with other musicians and, and singers and, our community is really strong. Something uh, hit me too when you were talking about that, Christian, about the physiology of music too, because you brought up Gerald Albright. So Gerald is one of the greatest players in the instrument. Uh, if you had the same instrument, like a saxophone, a generic saxophone with a generic mouthpiece and a reed, and you had Gerald Albright play it, it's not his horn, but a horn, it would probably sound like Gerald Albright. Mm-hmm. Take the same exact equipment and, and put it in my hands, it would sound like me. Mm-hmm. So the, mm-hmm. It's like, how do you separate your humanity from your music? It's, it's not separable. Mm. It's not possible to separate it. So when and you, you know what's, like, what's crazy about that is there are tens of millions of people who play instruments. And you could probably say, okay, there's probably a thousand that are well known. And then there's probably a hundred that they play one note on whatever that instrument is. You're like, Dave Cos, Sanborn, Albright, you know, Miles. It, it's just so amazing that there are people who, that whatever difference between man and machine melds and their spirit comes through and it's, it's, it's instantly recognizable. The thing that I appreciate, and I, I've told you guys, I'm not a singer, but when you guys open your mouths up or any singer that opens their mouth up, there is no instrument. Like there is a piece of metal that I can always use. It's a bit of a crutch too, to be honest with you, because it's this thing that is right there between me and uh, the listener or the audience. Mm. And in, in a lot of ways you can really lean on the equipment, but if you're a singer, you got nothing. That's like complete vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Like here is my more. heart. Huh? Let me correct you, because with us, these guys are actually my crutch. That's oh, my Mark, you're so kind. 
No, that's that's exactly what happens in a group. We are each other's crutches because you know, um, you know, I know Claude does a lot of solo work, um, but we have gotten so used to being out there with each other that there is a comfort level. That you know, there is absolutely no jitters. We are just like in the zone when we are out there on our own. But let let me try to go out there by myself. It's a whole different world. Not that I can't do it, but it's a way different world. So so we understand. You know, they are my instrument, and yeah. it's like your instrument is uh, is is your sax. Well, that makes perfect sense, and it also is just so right seeing you guys together just like that mm. just together. Mm. everything's right in the world when you guys are together side by side oh yeah That's it's right. kind of crazy because we hadn't been together for what it was i guess nine months of last year and mm -hmm. then we got together in like september or so and literally it was it wasn't even about the music at that point it was really just the camaraderie it's like oh man i love you man I haven't seen you in forever. And, and that's... We had never been that part that... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, in know. 30 years. Yeah. In 30 years. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So have you guys done... show? Have you done a show back from COVID yet? We've done a few. We've done, what, maybe three, three since done, COVID? Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. We've got one coming up in about a week and a half. And is this a live stream or a, uh, a, a actual sh concert? This one is a concert. A way I always said a concert. <laughs> We're in trouble. <laughs> Let's see how you do. <laughs> we get to see live faces. Hello, well, crutches. To, to that end, you? we did something fairly recently. I guess it was the Huntsville thing where we did a bunch of singing and it was going to be um, recorded and then mixed and then sent out later on. We were so tired and so beat up from doing that because we hadn't done it in literally not that much in a year that I got back to the hotel. And, oh God, yeah, I don't know. Should I, should I still be doing this? That's right. <laughs> it makes you wonder. I'm actually yeah. worried about it. The, the thing that you played uh, a new day, that was a live stream that we did in December, which is why I was wearing my red coat. Um, and it was, we were in a, a sequestered in this studio, uh, with no audience, the mm -hmm. strangest thing. And I've, we've done a few of those now, the live streams, uh, experiences, but it's, it's so true. That was the first time that I had played a show in yeah. a whole year and yeah. I, I'd never been more tired yes. than yeah. after that show. Yeah. I, was like, I couldn't talk to anybody for like, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, we're, we were so used to doing it all the time. Yeah. That that's your normal and now normal has yeah. become yeah, it's a physical workout that you don't think about yeah. too it's like i was sore for three days which, mm -hmm. which speaks to what energy the audience actually gives you mm -hmm. right yeah so that's so right on the money because without that not only do you have these very awkward things because we all have arrangements that are you you, you, you hit it at the end so that you get that roar from the audience and you hit it and there's like Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> let me ask. Let me ask you, Dave. Did you ever have, uh, like, for me, for thirty six years, I've always quietly panicked. What would I do if I couldn't do this anymore? What would it look like? What would my life like? And then all of a sudden, whoosh, I was home. Did you ever have that moment, like, man, what if I can't ever do this again? I think every musician has that that uh, thought cross their head and 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 you try and you try it on for size and, and see how it is. I'm, I'm one of these people. I never had a regular job. I never had the uh, and and part of me it always wanted it. I always wanted to. I remember there was a period of time where I was like, I just want to have a desk with a phone on it, <laughs> a and cubicle, a, <laughs> and a, like a blo a, a blotter. And, uh, you know, a Rolodex that I could call some people on. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that uh, dream anymore. But I thought, like, it, there was a period of time where some level of normalcy was what I was, was craving. But I'm glad that 
um, that never happened. I, I feel very extremely blessed to have a, a, a career in music and to be able to, um, you know, I, have, I had a very strange upbringing. I mean, everybody has a story. The saxophone came into my life um, at a very important time. I didn't even realize why it came into my life, but I was a very, very awkward kid. And in seventh grade, I was dealing with, you know, growing up with, with uh, being gay and not being able to talk about it or figure out, and, you know, a strange, stranger in my own family. And the saxophone was sort of put in my hands. Mm. at that very interesting cross section of life and it gave me a lifeline mm. I, don't, I don't like to be over dramatic but i think in a lot of ways it may have saved my life because wow. it gave me like wow. a voice that i didn't i didn't have i was a very 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 shy and very reserved person mm. and the saxophone gave me confidence That's and it, great. it was i was good at it like right away and mm. so like oh well i guess i'm okay i can mm -hmm. do this. And so um, I, that's not lost on me, that connection with the instrument of why it came into my life and the purpose mm -hmm. beyond career and beyond, uh, doing the, the, the financial rewards of it way mm -hmm. beyond all of that is the, is the connection, like that best friend connection with the instrument because it showed up for me and has never let me down. Love that's it. An awesome story, wow. man. Thank you for sharing that. Sincerely. Um, so our, yeah, I'm watching the, the chat over here on YouTube Live and our fans are loving it, man. Loving okay. you. And they're talking about concerts that they've been to and, and all of that, um, which is really, really cool when I'm able to watch this thing in real time. Um, and they want us to do the the, uh, the the cruise with you. They want us to do the album with you. Sure. So the sure. fans want it. Check, 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 check. Let's, Let's make it, it happen. Um, and it's funny because I was going to ask the question and then you, you went into it. What have you learned about yourself? You know, since all this has happened, you already mentioned, you know, Netflix for a while and, and all of that. Are there other things that you have found about yourself in completely shutting down as far as touring is concerned that you're like, wow, I never really knew that about me, but now I have the time to not only realize it, but maybe even, um, put effort towards it or whatever, whether it's in or outside of music. Yeah, there was one thing that came and I've, I've not cooked at all. I, I'm me in a kitchen. It's just not a, not a relationship kind of a thing, <laughs> but I've always been fascinated with people who can cook and cook well. And I love food. Of course, I love the experience. Uh, so when the pandemic, when the quarantine hit, I have a place in Northern California, uh, it's a city, called the, not even a city, it's like a tiny little hamlet called Sausalito. So mm -hmm. I ended up spending way more time there in the uh, quarantine, uh, All actually all of 2020, I spent most of the time up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a small little place, but um, it's got a great kitchen. And one of my best friends who is my neighbor, who I kind of sort of went through the quarantine with, he also uh, has never really cooked. So we, we decided to become, uh, to, to sign up for this thing called uh, Blue Apron, which mm -hmm. is a box. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be like a Garanimals for cookers. <laughs> <laughs> you have to really, really try hard to screw it up. Right. So, uh, <laughs> we, it's like the same thing. We, we went in, we dove in, and we, the box comes, and it's got all the, ingredients it's already somebody's already done the shopping for you so you just follow the recipe and the next thing you know we were like eating these great dinners that we cooked <laughs> so it's again like the same thing it's confidence being able to mm -hmm. do something and be you know to have the tools to to uh, do it well enough so that you can continue to do it and learn something and and get to the next level. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that I um, really am happy and proud of uh, the mm -hmm. quarantine experience brought to me was being able to be in a kitchen and not freak out. That's awesome. Okay, so that I have really to ask the cool. question. Um, do, do you have anything, any hobby that you like to do outside of music that doesn't have anything to do with music? It's just something way different. What would that be if you have it at all? Uh, the thing that just came to my head, Mark, my, my dad, um, when he was alive, he used to do these, uh, the crossword puzzle the, in the newspaper. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, while he was alive, I did not understand that. I was like, what's the, why? What, why would you find that in- entertaining? <laughs> and uh, since he passed away, he's been gone almost 25 years now. Uh, mm-hmm. That's been my, my, uh, my go-to. It just quiets my mind. It, um, it's good for your mind, too. It mm-hmm. keeps everything kind of working. And uh, I'm kind of a word person and I love, I love sitting, especially on a Sunday with the New York Times magazine, Crosser mm-hmm. Puzzle, mm-hmm. a cup of coffee on a Sunday morning. Happiest as, as, as can be. That's and, Dean Brown. Do you know Dean? Guitar? Yeah. Oh, he's a crossword nut. Really? Yeah. Cross, you guys would get along fabulously. Okay. <laughs> crossword <laughs> nut, yeah. Well, if I get stuck, you might have to give me his number. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call him up. Hey. That'll work. So, I have across. One question for you. One more question. Um, you know, I I just turned 57. And and Claude is, and you know, the rest of us, we're and Ben too. We're not to mention my brother, who is a, a an iron man. We are all trying to keep our bodies together, stay in shape, and and doing our best to keep our health together. What do you do? Because you obviously have it together. You're doing something right. Looking good, man. What are you doing? <laughs> this has been the best podcast of all time. For me. <laughs> you elevated my mood. That's what we're here for. Can, can I be next week's guest too, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Uh, but uh, I learned about this app, this free app, um, probably about five years ago. And I do it every day maybe six days a week, but you, you have to do it every day or six days a week mm-hmm. and, and combine it with a pretty good diet, like a pretty good, maybe a lower carb, lower in carb diet, not too many sweets and stuff like that. But it's, it's called the seven minute workout. Mm-hmm. And it really is seven minutes and it's an app on your phone. You just put it out. I usually do it with my, whenever I shower during the day, like 10 minutes before the shower, and you can't, I can say no to going to the gym. I could say no to doing a treadmill. I can, you know, say no to a lot of things, but it's hard for me to say no to seven minutes. It's mm. seven minutes. But if you do it consistently, um, it actually works. So it's not like I'm going to be Mr. Cut, but everything sort of stays in its right place. <laughs> Geography. <laughs> good, good word right there. Word. He said, I can't say no to seven minutes, man. That's, no that's awesome. A magical number, that's seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so money, no object, resources, no object. What ultimately do you want to create as a legacy? Just Dave Kaz, eh, what is that? What if you didn't have any limitations whatsoever what does dave want to accomplish jeez he does this every year throw me a softball for god's sakes (laughs) come on larry king that's a a heavy duty question okay let me think about this well what do you want to accomplish i know that i'm preaching to. it'll take longer than seven minutes though uh uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir here with the with this group of people who um, exemplify what I would say is my goal. Uh, you guys exemplify it better than anybody. And that is, it really is less about how much money you make or how many gigs you do a year. Um, it's really about touching people. And if it's just a small group of people, but they're really touched, um, then that's successful. And music is love. And in our world right now, I don't need to tell you guys, we're, we're in a very, very tough place in our world right now. And the United States, you know, this is my country. It's, I love the United States, but I'm, I'm worried. I'm honestly worried about the future of our country and the future mm-hmm. of the world too, because as human beings, we don't seem to learn our lessons. We're, just, we're fighting the same things that we, I, I thought that, you know, a lot of this stuff should have been taken care of a long time ago, but we're still dealing with major institutional issues. And so I think that the role of an artist, you guys, myself, anybody that's creating art in the world, their jobs have never been more important than at the exact moment. Mm-hmm. To create art, 
to create the antidote for all the hate and all the people that just don't want to listen and don't want to change and don't want to open their hearts up. Mm -hmm. We just have a big job to do right now. Our job is to, in whatever way we can, is to spread love. And that's, Come that's on now. you know, that's it. So that's, that's my perfect. job. I know that's your job. Man, absolutely. You will be on spread. next week, Dave. Yeah, that's right. You are on the <laughs> Spread Love Podcast. It's perfect, man. And so I want to ask you this, because we're going to let you go in just a couple of minutes. Please tell us or tell them, because I, I've watched this video that we're about to play. What was the, the, uh, the idea behind this Dr. Norm? Okay, so Dr. Norm was my dad. He was a okay. dermatologist. Uh, practicing in the San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a total character. And this is a song from the album that I wrote with Jeff Lorber that uh, featured uh, Paul Jackson Jr. on it. But when, we, when it came time to doing a video for the, for the song, because it was our second single, uh, I didn't want to just create a, a regular music video. It just seemed kind of, why would we do that? So I met these two young filmmakers uh, through Corey Wong and a uh, 25-year-old writer director guys and i said you know come up with something that is a is a shocker just something different like surprise me so they wrote a, a treatment they sent it to me and i called them up and i said i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> and then they walked me through it you know page by page and then i said at the end of that i said i still don't understand but let's do it because mm -hmm. you think that this is going to be great it's totally out there Let's just, just go with it. How, how bad could it be? So they made it. And when I saw the finished product, I was completely blown away by these mm. kids. I mean, their vision for this idea was something that I would have never, ever uh, come up with. So it's, um, it's kind of a special thing. And Dr. Norms also refers to the, uh, I hope it's okay to bring this up on this podcast, but my brother and sister, my older brother and sister, um, have a cannabis company named after my dad called Dr. Norms. Mm. And Dr. Norms has the number one cannabis cookie in the state of California now. Go figure. Okay. Wow. Uh, and I wonder, yeah. like, what would my dad say? <laughs> I think he would actually like it, but that's, that's cool. So before we play it, I just want to, I want to say thank you for being here with us, man, because we're going to, we're going to play, uh, the video, I mean, the, the, the podcast out with the video. So thank you so much for being here with us, man. And how can people, how can people find you? Give, give, give them all your social media, man. So they can jump to that. Uh, my. You froze. It's a lot of. It must be a lot of them because he's frozen right now. <laughs> he's frozen. Everybody's <laughs> like, yeah. You forgot. <laughs> That's it. So what we'll do is while he is unfreezing, we're going to have Jason play Dr. Norm and then we'll, we'll stay and we'll get that from him after. We probably put it in the uh, comment section. We can do that as well. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, cookies. Oh. Oh, there he is. Oh, so we're going we're, we're gonna to start the video and then you can tell us. Okay. Okay. Are you guys ready? <laughs> For me, it all begins with the teeth. <laughs> the embouchure is, is everything. I prefer the cheeks and the chin. I prefer latex to rubber. It makes the smile more, more emotive, more joyous. <sighs> I've been through more than a few of these in my time. Oh, I'm tired? <laughs> well, I've been doing this for 30 years. There's a certain responsibility, a certain, a certain expectation. Mr. Koss. Yeah. We're ready for you. Okay. Just a moment. 
an actor prepares. <clears throat> an actor prepares. Thank you for finally joining us. Yes, well, some days I find cause and some days I don't. Excellent work today. See you all tomorrow. Yes? Oh, uh, sorry. I don't love it at all. Richard, how are you? I'm fine. Are you called for today? Oh, it's Thursday, right? Mm, yes, but we didn't call you. You didn't call? No, we didn't call. What is that? Uh, we're trying a new direction for the character. We're just exploring our options. O options? Yes, um, it's, it's not the same market it was 30 years ago. That is not cause. That, that is not cause. What is that? Just the sax. That is not a saxophone. can live on without me now. So, yeah, it's on to the next adventure, whatever that may be. Dave Cars! I'm so glad we didn't release you after that video that was amazing wow <laughs> I'm great so blown away. It's hilarious so cool. Dude. this guy by the way is a, an actor in los angeles his name is not sir Richard he's not a he's not a sir either by the way
uh, but he was a great actor. And um, uh, I had so much fun that day, just, but I had no idea what he, what they were doing because we did it all out of order. And right. the, these kids were like, just do this. Do I was like, well, you just tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Hope for the best. What is this? This is not cause. This is not cause. I had no Great, idea man. what they were going for, but it was uh, hilarious. Listen, Dude, at when... this point in our lives, to not poke a little fun at yourself and have, you know, take it with all with a grain of salt. That's my. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's not so absolutely. serious. It doesn't have to be so serious. Yeah. Well, I loved it. And I really wanted it to be a part of this uh, podcast. So thank you. In fact, thank you for freezing because we really needed to tell you that yeah. after the fact. And let us bring you back. Yeah. Well, I love I love hanging with you guys. And um, the, a lot happened on this podcast. We we have our future nicely mapped out together. Yeah, that's right. We got two gigs yeah. at least together. <laughs> so now tell I mean, people where they can find you, Dave, and then yeah. we will release you. <laughs> DaveCause.com and on social media, Dave, uh, Dave Cause Music. Instagram is my full name, which is David Stephen with a PH cause and um, do, do keep in touch. And you guys, I will see you all very soon. I don't know where, but it will be soon. And I love you all very, very much. Thank love you too, you brother. Thank you guys love for you all that you do and continue to do. And um, let's, make, let's make some music together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you man. man. We love you, man. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for all having right. me. Our Absolutely, pleasure. Bro. Take All right, everybody. Up. Thanks for being here. You've been a part of the uh, Spread Love podcast. Like, subscribe, jump onto Dave Cause's media sites, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Next time. Ciao. Welcome. <laughs>